It doesn't matter how many tiny houses we visit, it really seems like every place we find has these incredibly unique elements that are perfectly customized to the people who are living in the home. And that is exactly the case with this next incredible DIY project that we've found here in Wellington, New Zealand. Hey Jake! Hey, that's to meet Bryce. Good to meet you mate. Hi Erin, <laughs> lovely to meet you. You too. This is such a beautiful looking home and I cannot believe your parking spot. How did you find this place? Well you've got it on the best day, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we went on a website called Landshare, which is a New Zealand website where people with an empty patch of land can go on and post their land and then people with tiny houses or mobile homes or things can go on and message them through that. What a great resource. Yeah, lucky to find that one. Yeah. <laughs> What was it that inspired you both to build a tiny house on wheels? I was actually probably watching your videos about <laughs> two years ago, I'd say. And yeah, we just watched them for about a summer and then one day we were sort of like, could we actually just do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I do architecture as a job, so it seemed like a really neat project for me to be able to actually get my hands dirty and get on the tools and be able to build my own house. So everything in the house is really personalised. We really thought about what we needed out of a living space and then sort of went from there and built around you know the restrictions on space and that was a really good project it took about a year for me to design the whole thing yeah we were just tweaking us and tweaking us yeah out. you've really got to think about every little millimeter of space and how it can be utilized but that's a really good project for me to do as an architectural technician this was a really valuable experience for me so i was able to put myself in the shoes of the client and think about what was important to us to have in a living space and I wrote out a whole brief for everything that we wanted and then sort of accumulated my architectural knowledge and interior design experience and brought that all together and created sort of the ultimate space for us. During the design process I often would have ideas but obviously had no way to articulate them in the way that needs to be for a, a construction so it was really great to have Erin <laughs> be able to uh, flesh out my ideas and incorporate them into our house as well. Yeah I think Jake's a little bit more of like a creative free thinker and I'm more sort of technical and <laughs> so it was good for him to kind of come up with these crazy out of the box ideas and then me to actually think about how they were going to work in reality of construction. <laughs> And can you tell me a bit about the exterior design of the home? I really love natural materials and I'm a big fan of you know exposed timber wherever I can so for the outside we wanted to have these lovely macrocarpa weatherboards and then offset by the black vertical corrugate as well and I think that's worked out quite well. When it came to the build of this home was this a DIY project? Yeah, absolutely DIY. <laughs> I did all the design for it and then I did the majority of the building as well along with some help from my father who's a builder and Jake was working at the time and so he came down a few weekends and helped out as well. We'll build it down in Nelson so we ended up having to bring it over on the ferry um, which is a little bit nerve-wracking yeah, but worked super out. Super nerve-wracking. <laughs> super, super easy. Was it? Yeah. It sounds like you got out of most of the hard labour there mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to stay here basically and keep working, so yeah. funded as the project was progressing. Mm. So what size is the house? So it's 7 by 2.4 and then just under 4.2 high, so we've kind of pushed it right to the boundaries of what we're allowed to take on the road. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well the exterior of the home looks great, I'm already very jealous of the view that you've got <laughs> from your parking spot. Should we go in and check out the house? Sure, yeah. come on in. Thank you. Oh, this place is absolutely charming i love the style of it oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> tell me about how you've laid out the interior space so as you walk in we've got the entrance and we knew we wanted to have a big open entryway so we kept the ceiling really high in this space and we've got a, the couch kind of around the fire so we've got a nice cozy little area down there and then we've got a galley sort of style kitchen which works quite well because we've put the fridge and the pantry and the stove all under the stairs and under the landing upstairs and so that allows us to have a big nice bench space on the other side looking out the window. Upstairs we've actually got two separate lofts, we've got a bed loft and a TV loft. <laughs> uh, and then 
a really cool feature, it's probably one of my favourite parts of the house is our eucalypt ceiling which we uh, sourced eucalypt from the Motueka Valley near Nelson and uh, we were yeah, we put that up over Christmas. <laughs> Beautiful, it really is quite a lovely timber isn't it? Mm. So first of all let's talk about the lounge because it's quite unusual how you've laid out the couch but it works so well just having that fire as a centerpiece doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah it was really important to us to not kind of skimp on space in the lounge space so we knew we wanted a nice big couch that we could lie down on and yeah just create its own little space. And you've chosen the sparky wood stove now this is one of my favorites but does it cook you out of this place? Yeah, it does get really hot once we've got it roaring in winter, so it has taken us a little bit of time to kind of work out how much fuel we need fuel to put we in need. it. <laughs> and we've found that if we use longer burning hardwoods, then it works a lot better. Yeah. And one of the things that I love most about your couch is that you do get to take full advantage of that spectacular view. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to have it feel really open, and so having the big French doors right by the couch makes it really nice to open it up in summer. Nice shelves by your entranceway as well. Yeah, thank you. I actually made those right at the end just before we put the house on the ferry. We had a few leftovers from the ceiling, so I thought I'd whack those together and make a little shelf by the door. <laughs> and now moving into the kitchen, talk to me about all of the cabinetry here because it looks like you've done some really interesting stuff. Yeah, so I really wanted to use a lot of natural timber. That's my personal preference for interior design so I used a lot of this birch ply on the kitchen joinery so I've got the shelves which are just 90 mil thick so the thickness of the framing and then we've put a shelf in here again like making the most of every little bit of storage that we can and then under there is where we've got our fold out table when we use that we've got a little wire which we tie it to up there to get a nice flat dinner space and then again we've got more storage under there obviously <laughs> And so we used that as our dinner table. That was a really important feature that we didn't want to just end up eating dinner on the couch or whatever. So, um, and we also just use that, you know, for working on or whatever. And then moving along, we've got a nice big pantry in here and that's got a lot of space in it as well. So this is actually a bigger pantry than we've had in apartments and things we've lived in before, which is great. And then uh, we've also got the fridge and the stove tucked in under here as well. And then on the other side we've got a lovely big bench space, more kitchen storage and also we managed to sneak a wee dishwasher in there as well which was another feature which was really important to us. Very clever design. I love all the functionality that you've built into this but it's also got a lot of artistic elements too. I really like all of the open shelving. You've got this wonderful little display over in the corner too. Yeah well half of that was all planned and carefully designed and inspiration off Pinterest and everything <laughs> and then half of it was fully just uh, you know winging it as we were building such as these shelves where it was kind of like oh this corner's looking a little bare, let's chuck some plywood in there and set that up, yeah. You did also train as an interior designer before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little bit of background in it. So you had a little bit of an advantage there. <laughs> yeah, you could say that, <laughs> yeah. And then is that the bathroom behind you there? Yeah, so we've got a cavity slider going into the bathroom where we've got the shower on one side and then the nature's head composting toilet on the other side. And it's worked out really well for us, it's less maintenance, less smell, you know, a lot of really pleasant to use. Yeah, going into it, it was uh, one of the things we're sort of most nervous about really, but it's just turned out to be so drama free, we don't even <laughs> think about it. Yeah. <laughs> we're on rainwater, we collect rainwater, um, we've just got a 200 litre tank out the back, so it's not a large amount of water, we're quite conservative with what we do use. We also uh, carry away all our grey water, so we're uh, yeah, fully self-contained in that respect. For that reason, we are very cautious about how much water we do use here. I think we use maybe about 80 litres a week, something like that. 200 litres, that really is not a lot of water. Yeah. How do you find that? Have you ever had problems with running out? We haven't run out yet. Over the last few weeks of summer, we've had to top it up a few times. Uh, but mostly, we've found the easiest way to do things is just not shower at home as much as we can because we go to the gym every day. We just shower at the gym and uh, Beyond showering, there's not a huge amount you use a lot of water for apart from yeah. dishes. But it's easy to top it up, so it's not too big a deal. And then shall we check out the upstairs because I'm really interested to see how you've made the double loft work. Yeah, sure, come on up. Thank you. Oh, this is a very unusual design. It was important to us that 
we had a separate space for our ridiculously big TV, <laughs> which was definitely a necessity because we get really into movies because Jake's in the film industry. Uh, but we knew we didn't want to be lying in bed and watching TV, so it was important to us that we had two separate loft spaces. So we've got the bed in one of them, and then we've got a TV watching area in the other one. <laughs> Brilliant. I really like how you've lowered this part of the loft as well so that you still can stand in here. That's a really nice addition too. Yeah, we actually got inspiration from a few other tiny house designs and thought that was a really cool idea, so built the design around that. Yeah, and we got it to the point where I can just stand up at this highest point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you've separated the two lofts with this as well. Can you talk to me about how this works? Yes, yeah, so this is a whole lot more storage. We have a mini little wardrobe in here and then we've each basically got a side of these uh, cupboards and then underneath there's another whole big area for storage of stuff that you don't need access to quite as often. Maybe, you know, your, your winter clothes and things that you rotate over a season. Mm. Mm. And then we've got our laundry baskets on top as well. Very clever design. And then can you talk to me about the roof pitch as well? Because this is a little bit unusual. Yeah, so I wanted to keep it as flat as possible. So this roof on this side is actually a four degree roof pitch. And on this side, obviously, we could go a little bit steeper. So I went with a six degree roof pitch on that. And I think it just adds a little bit of cool asymmetry to the design. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, should we check out the next part of the loft? Yeah, sure. Come on through. So this is our TV loft. And this is what we have jokingly dubbed the theatre because we've got a whole big screen covering one wall. And then we've made a cosy little space with a whole lot of cushions. And we also put the skylight into the space because we knew it would feel quite small. So we put that in and it brings in a lot of natural light and space. That could easily be the biggest television that I've ever seen in a tiny house. What size is that? Yeah, it's a little bit ridiculous. We actually had it before we had the house, so we built the room around it somewhat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a 55 inch. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> this really has created a wonderful entertainment space for you both, hasn't it? Yeah, we do probably spend uh, a lot of time up here, that's for sure. Yeah, and it also can double as a guest bedroom, which we've had a few people sleeping in here before, and that works really well. So how long have you been living in this home now? So coming up next Saturday, it will be one year exactly. Yeah, and it just simplifies life, I think, is the most important thing. So, you know, you don't spend a lot of time cleaning or worrying about maintenance on the house and you don't have a lot of stuff. So it's really just, you know, stress-free. Yeah, frees you up to focus on things that are more important to you than cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been living together for... Uh, quite a few years before moving to the tiny house anyway. We both work long hours and when we come home, you know, people often ask, you know, where do you go if you have a fight or something like that? But we, we don't particularly really, do we? <laughs> well, yeah, we haven't really found that we need our own space as much. So it does work quite well, kind of having enforced, I don't know, like closeness. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we have actually found that, um, I would say it's brought us closer. And can we talk a little bit about the cost of building this home? So in terms of materials and all the money that went into the home, it was probably around 50, 55,000 to build it. Uh, but of course that's not including all of our hours of free labor and time spent. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit surreal having gone through all these stages of design, seeing the plans, drawing the plans out on the sand on the beach. Um, you built a little scale model of the house and now we're living in that model. Yeah, it's just a great feeling being able to wake up in a space that we've built ourselves and just see all those features that we sort of agonised over for months and, you know, thought about should we do this, shouldn't we, and then seeing it now and living in it is just, yeah, it's, it's really special. I think you've done such a great job in designing this home. You've built in some really unique features and it's obviously a design that is working really well for the both of you. Thank you so much for sharing your great home with me. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Within such a small footprint of a tiny house on wheels, it completely blows my mind just how many variations there are in terms of style and layout. What Erin and Jake have created here is something truly unique. It's a home that has some very interesting design features like the double loft, which I think is such a great addition. And it really goes to show that no matter what your needs are, you can really build a small home that will absolutely work for you.